So I just walked in the reptile room, Avalanche is chilling. Of course, we're gonna try and feed him. I don't know if he'll eat, but he's been kind of freaking out a little bit. Oh my gosh, look at those colors, man. Oh, he is so beautiful. But we're gonna give him some food. Hopefully he eats. He won't eat on camera, I don't think, but. What is going on with you guys, man? We are finally back here in the reptile room. I feel like it's been a while since I've actually given you guys a video in here. But you guys seen the title of this video, why in the world am I going to starve my monitor lizards? Now that is a very, very valid question that you guys may be asking. The truth is, I'm not technically going to starve them even though they are going to act like they're starving. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about that. Admittedly though, I do have something I need to tell you guys, and that is this. I wanna make more videos. I wanna upload more frequently. The support on this channel has been unreal. Like literally you guys are smashing it every video. The the love, the support, the comments, the the shares, the likes, guys, everything. This is, it's literally crazy. I, I cannot believe this is like real life. Oh man, look at that jump. Beautiful animal. Oh yeah, leave his face. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get everybody fed. If you guys didn't notice, real one got his braces off. I'm saying I gotta wear this retainer, is what it is. But it's better than better than having braces. I had braces for like four years. Oh, it was like four years in one month and I finally got them off yesterday. So shout out if you noticed. If you didn't notice, it's all good. I still love you. So why on God's green earth am I starving my monitors? Now guys, this comes down to something very, very simple. And it's the fact that I'm not starving them. They are simply going to be eating less for the winter. A lot of you guys have been asking for an update on Blue and how he's doing. Don't mind the mess back there, but this is the Argus monitor and how he's doing. Oh my goodness, he's getting, he's getting big, man. So instead of the monitors eating three to four times a week, decently hefty meals, and their temperatures being super, super high. Of course, they always have areas to retreat, but high temperatures. They are going to only start eating maybe one to two times a week as I taper them down to eating maybe one time a week and much, much lighter meals. This guy is really wanting to say hi to the camera, man. Here, you, you want it? Oh, his nails are very, very sharp. But they're gonna be eating a lot less, and this is due to one fact and one fact alone. The temperatures are going to fall. Now the temperatures are going to fall naturally in the room because I do let the temperatures fall naturally in the room. In the summertime, it gets super, super hot. I'm in an insulated garage, but the room can get 90 to 95 degrees easily in the summertime. So I use that air conditioning unit to cool this room down. Now, because I have so many lights in here, it does compound that heat. In the winter time, the temperatures of outside, of course, are much, much lower. I'm gonna show you guys. This is the garage door, right? This acts like a, a heat panel. So when the, when the heat hits it, it starts to basically radiate to the entire room and it can really get hot in here. But when the sun shines on it, even in the winter time when it's cold outside, it actually kind of does the opposite and it stays pretty cool and does not let any excess heat in here, which allows the lights to kind of heat the room itself. So instead of the room staying in the 80s, like it might in the summer, in the winter time, this room might only reach 75 degrees tops. A lot of people will actually change their lighting um, for, to lower wattage bulbs and whatnot. What I actually find with this room is that I can keep the bulbs the same and with the fall and ambient temperature in the room, the bassian temperatures will naturally lower. The ambient temps in the enclosures will naturally lower. I have very, very large enclosures. So there's always a good thermal gradient. He's licking my foot right now. I'm, I'm telling you he's licking my foot and I'm sweating a lot because at the moment it's very, very warm outside. It's not winter yet, even though it's approaching the middle of November, which is insane by the way. But here in Maryland, it doesn't really start to get cold, cold until like end of November, December, which is scary because it used to get cold in like October. This guy is in this entanglement of different things. Just look at his enclosure. Gotta clean his water, of course, but still doing very, very well. So in the summertime, guys, this enclosure ambient will be in the mid eighties, cooler under there, cooler in his hide box extremely humid, right? But in the winter time, the only areas that are really getting that heat are is from the lamps. So the ambient temperature in here is going to fall. These basking temperatures are not gonna be aided by the ambient temperatures. He's really far back there. There's no way out of here, but I don't like him being back there. He'll come back out because he's a good boy. And we have food for him. Okay. <laughs> so another thing is the humidity. I am sweating, it is officially hot. Another thing is the humidity, guys. 
You do not want to have high humidity if you are cooling down your enclosures. A lot of humidity and a lot of heat is good for monitors, but a lot of humidity and less heat is bad. That's how you start getting respiratory infections. That's how you start getting different things popping up. What? I don't understand what he's doing. Okay, you want to go back in? You're, you're something else, man. What we're going to do as we cool our enclosures is we are going to make this humidity go down. For example, this enclosure, which you guys know is on this automatic timer that sprays. Oh man, that's why you don't let them walk around. You accidentally step on them. This thing is on an automatic timer. This is a Mist King. Shout out Mist King, please sponsor me. Where it'll go off at certain times of the day. So if we can get into the menu. Yeah. So at 9.30 a.m. it'll do for three minutes. 4 p.m. it'll do for a minute 20. 9 p.m. it'll do for a minute 30. And that is more or less the summertime rotation. But as it starts to cool down, the temperatures start to fall in the room and everything starts to get a lot cooler, we are going to be moving that to only spraying maybe once to twice a day for a couple seconds. Of course, if need be, we will spray more. But you guys can expect a lot of these plants to maybe get a little bit more brown, possibly even die because of the, le the lesser amount of water going in. Now, of course, you guys do know that this enclosure is going to be taken down eventually anyway, so we won't have to worry about it so much. But the principle still does stand. <sighs> guys, don't get monitors. Don't get monitors because they do this. And then they give you this weird eye that's like makes you think we're doing something wrong. Don't gaslight me into thinking I'm the one making a mistake because you want to crawl back there. Did you guys hate when monitors gaslight you? Hey, come back. Actually, you can play around, I don't really care. I do wanna give you all a little bit of an update on what's going on in here. So, I did a lot of this leaf litter. Went and got it outside. Good stuff, man. Good, good stuff. Obviously helps with the, oh my goodness, look at all the baby millipedes in there. This is annoying. This is another reason that this is, that this enclosure is gonna be, this is disgusting. Look, these baby garden millipedes, they're harmless guys, they're very harmless but they are not fun to look at. Man, there's so many of them in here. Oh my gosh. That makes me wish I wouldn't have done that. They're, they're absolutely everywhere. This is really annoying. If you guys know how to get rid of these. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to use any of this substrate because I'm not dealing with those millipedes. All right guys, so we're gonna, we're gonna appease the dragon first and we're gonna feed him. You guys know the deal here. Whoa. Literally cannot even, whoa, he's, He's really hungry. You guys see how, how nice and trim he looks. Look at that, guys. Look at the body on that monitor lizard. This is how monitors should look. Nice and trim. All right, buddy, you ready to eat? Come on, come on. Give me an up. Give me an up. Come up, all the way up. There you go, come on. There you go, good boy. All right, guys. You guys ready? Oh my goodness. You gotta be super careful, man, when feeding these, especially with one hand and a camera. It is not. It's not safe in the least bit. This is not a safe thing to do. So in the summertime, he's getting two to three chicks twice a week, guys. But here as we start to cool him down, the temperature is dropping, which means he's not able to digest and his metabolism is not as fast. We're gonna be feeding him smaller meals less often. Let's give him another one. He has not eaten in about a week. So this is his first meal in a week, decent sized meal. You guys see how amazing his body composition is. This is not a skinny lizard, guys. This is a very fit monitor lizard. Nice lateral fold. He wants to eat the camera right now. You gotta be very careful. But nice lateral fold on him. This guy is awesome. I love my Argus monitor, man. Look at him getting all testy with the shoes. Okay, buddy. You're gonna get back in your enclosure. Come on. All right, you guys. So I just woke up Venus down here. And guys, it's kind, of, it's kind of the same thing. In the summertime, he might eat five to six times a week, decent sized meals. But as the winter goes on, he's not going to be eating that much, even though he is extremely hungry right now. Again, this is his first meal in probably five days. Okay. You guys can see he is a great eater. These are dubias. I have him mostly on dubias now. I'll give him a piece of chicken like chop chick every once in a while, like maybe the foot or uh, the leg. But he's mostly on dubias, crickets, insects. Being a great, great lean diet. 
And he as well is very, very nice and lean. He's even a little bit bigger than I would like. He is not a fan of the camera either. But still got a nice lateral fold. You may take one by hand. There we go. I did have to kind of wake him up to, to show him to you guys and to feed him, but him and I are at a point in our relationship as monitor and human that I can handle him. He doesn't really like being handled, but if I need to handle him and, and I hate to say it, but force handle him, maybe do a health check or whatever, or move him, he's fine. And he goes back to normal in literally less than a minute because he is always hungry and food is the number one way to establish a relationship with your monitor. But yeah, same thing in here, guys. I'm really only running this one basking belt. This one right here is a halogen floodlight. And then this one, these are all LEDs for light. And this halogen floodlight, because this enclosure is so insulated, this is all foam and concrete over it, stays very, very warm. That's UVB. But in the winter time, of course the ambience fall, the heat gets sucked out a little bit faster. Just this one halogen is perfect. And in terms of a night drop, guys, I kind of let it drop to the ambient of the garage. Because of all the lights and all the heat in there during the day, this floor never gets too cold. And if it does, I have this space heater, which allows me to set it to a minimum temperature so that it never falls below probably 50, uh, 65, 66. This tongue gun this. This gun is dead. The battery finally gave up on it, huh? Well, that was a fail. We're gonna have to get a new battery for that Tom gun. This dude always looks so judgmental. Here, you have one more. Oh man, that was very, very close to my finger. Too close for comfort. So for Avalanche, I like to turn this light off just cause the glare. And he's probably gonna go back into his cork too. Like I said, guys, socialization with him has gone a little bit slow. And it's gone even slower since he escaped a couple videos ago. But this boy is right here. Yeah, he's gonna go back into his tube. He's beautiful, man. He's beautiful. His colors are awesome. Again, I've been slowing his food down. So you can see, we're gonna go ahead and grab that empty cup and fill it up with roaches because for some reason, he does not like to eat chicks. He's eating roaches, crickets. I think he's taking a little bit of egg. He knows we're talking about him. And then he's eating like chicken feet, but he won't eat whole, like the frozen thawed chicken feet. He only eats grocery store chicken feet, the big ones. Why? I'm not sure, but it's good calcium form, so I will supplement that every once in a while. Most of his, his meals are dusted though, so let's go ahead and grab this cup. All right, y'all. This, this is never fun. You guys can see, this is why you breed your own feeders, man. This is what I was talking about last, last video, saving money. I used to be super terrified of dubias just because of the way they looked. But once you actually get some and you kind of just take a look at them for what they are and you realize that they're not gonna hurt you and they just wanna kinda get away. They're not that bad, guys. They're not that bad. We're looking for these. I don't wanna give them the adults. This is like a, a very large nymph. Here's a freshly molted adult. See how it's kinda white? That's actually really cool. We'll give him five because he hasn't eaten in a while. Guys, shout out to my boy, Parker's Park. The tree monitor prints because he and I both hold the same opinion. Guys, male tree monitors don't need to eat that much food, especially in a captive setting. They, they just don't need to eat that much food. So we're gonna leave this in here for him. And he will come out and snag those as he pleases. Where is he? He's up here. He's looking at it. He knows the food's in there. Should be cool. I actually saw him. I haven't seen him eat in a while. I know he's eating because he's pooping and he's, Looks good, but I actually saw him eat like a week ago and it was cool. There we go. Man, I, even in that short time, I look significantly worse. There we go, guys. There we go. If you guys are wondering why I'm starving my monitor lizards, there's your answer, guys. I'm not truly starving them. I'm just cooling them down for the winter. Now, the reason I'm cooling them down is one, it's natural. You know, even though these monitors come from places that are very, very warm, um, Australia, uh, Southern New Guinea, they do still have cool, dry seasons. Aside from me trying to replicate natural conditions, it also helps with the fertility of males. The spermatophores are much more healthy and much more potent if you cool your monitors. I'm honestly not really even gonna have to do much with the tree monitor enclosure just cause it's so big, 
But as a general rule of thumb, cooling your monitors is gonna be much more natural as long as you do it the right way. This is not a guide on how to cool your monitors. If you guys wanna know how to cool monitors more specifically, let me know and I'll actually make a video on that. I'll consult um, a bunch of good friends of mine that are actually super, super, super well versed in it so that we can accurately bring you guys an informational video on how to cool your monitors, what the benefits are. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment down below, guys. Make sure you guys like this video, please. Liking it goes a long way. Sharing it, commenting, and number one, turn on post notifications. Guys, a lot of you guys have been saying you're not getting notifications for my videos. Go down and make sure you're subscribed, first of all. We're almost at 3K, which is mad hit that bell notification so you guys get notified whenever I upload a video. Again, big, big, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I love you guys. Consider joining the Patreon, guys. If you're a fan of what we're doing here, for as little as like a dollar or two a month, you guys can get behind the scenes access to a lot of different things. You guys don't have to go support monetarily, but it does mean a lot to me, those who decide to support in that way, because it kind of keeps us, keeps us being able to do what we want to do, guys. So I appreciate y'all for watching this video. I love you guys so much. The support's been real. Let's hit 3K. I'll see you guys in the next video.